Hey guys, Lucas from iExplore here. Today, we're gonna explore one of my favorite rooftops in the city with a lot of really cool views. And this video is made possible because one of our new Patreon supporters you know, really helped us out and then I asked him if he had a request and he said, why don't you make some more rooftop videos? So here we are. And I do wanna thank all of our Patreon supporters for supporting us. And also, if you have any uh, interest in the gear that I use in these videos, check out the referral links in the description below. Just clicking on those really helps us out. All right, so let's get on to shooting. Alright, so we're going to shoot this roof and I want to do it in a particular way. The entire video we're going to stay on this one rooftop and today I brought I got my backpack as you can see and when I bring it, it means I'm bringing a lot of gear. I usually don't like to carry this thing and in there I have my three main, you know, people call it the holy trinity which is a really corny thing to call it but I have my 14 to 24, 24 to 70 and 70 to 200 with me today and I'm going to use all of these lenses today for various shots. The idea being, you know, kind of how to work the scene or work the location on a rooftop, in a rooftop context like this. We'll use all the different focal lengths in various ways. And I'm going to start with the one in the middle because it's kind of like the obvious one, like the natural one that you're going to use, the 24 to 70. So we're going to do a couple of shots at these intermediate focal lengths. Then we'll do some with the 14 to 24. And at the end, we'll do some at telephoto focal lengths between 70 and 200. And we'll use all of those to take some interesting shots from this one rooftop. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna go over here. All right, so the first shots are from the back of the roof here. Well, honestly, I mean, the other focal lengths can work too, but for me, they're kind of in the middle range here. And one of them is, they're gonna be kind of simple. I'm gonna take some simple landscapes. Now, I deliberately didn't bother bringing my tripod today because I want it to be a little bit more like liquid or fluid in my uh, compositions and movements. And also to make the video more interesting because if it's always on a tripod, I think it's like we're too static. But most of, finally, actually, this is often how I shoot these things. I don't use a tripod for those reasons. And also I want to demonstrate how to just use the lens with keeping the eye so low, you know, with the IBIS. I think the IBIS is instrumental here. So I'm going to do a shot in this direction. I'm going to put it on M. I'm going to go down to like a tenth of a second, around F4, maybe 5.6, we'll see. Exposure compensation is on minus. Um, and I left the auto or the ISO on auto. I let the camera handle it. The max is 6400. I don't think I'll actually be hitting the max on most of these shots. And those of you who often ask this in the comments after the video, I promised I'd explain it earlier. For the metering mode, I'm using um, the center weighted average. So I'm averaging actually the whole frame with this setting. And finally, for the AF mode, I'm just using subject tracking, even though there's nothing to track, but it's just what I like to use. And we'll get started. And already it's even a little more overexposed than I thought with the average. So I'm on minus two point something at this point, 2.7. Okay, and we take a shot. And because I'm only on a tenth, I'm gonna take probably more than one at a time. Honestly, 2.7 is too much, I'm gonna go to minus two. Now one thing I love here, and it changes it a bit so it's less cool, it's a little better lit, but this building here on the right has this like very retro, almost Blade Runner-esque feel kind of reminds me of Deckard's apartment for those of you who've seen that movie a million times like I have but let's shoot it I'm gonna zoom into about 70 millimeter and do a kind of tight shot of it I'm gonna go to f4 minus a little more in the comp take that shot uh, I'm gonna go now to like a kind of we have a street down there and then we have buildings on the left I'm gonna do like a 50 50 shot where I'm getting the street and the buildings a little bit of both, minus two, f5.6. I'm gonna focus on that building in front of me over there. And we're even getting a Tokyo Tower over there, that purple lit thing in the background. It might not be coming out so good on the video, but it's there, that's Tokyo Tower. Okay. Now, some of you who've taken the Tokyo Vertigo photography workshop that we run probably came up here with me because this place is easy to get into and is interesting lots of shots up here which are those shots I'm doing now okay I'm double checking sharpness because remember I'm being very cavalier here I'm only on a tenth which the ibis can handle but you know not a hundred percent of the time every once in a while it'll be a little blurry so I'm just trying to make sure and also people ask me where do you focus like I generally try to focus in the mid-ground, but the mid-ground's quite long here. I mean, the background's very far away, so I'm focusing at different distances, and later on I'll decide which of those was perfect, because I'm only on f5.6 or 4, 
and double check which one I'm on. Yeah, and like that one shot was a little bit out of focus. And yeah, I'm on 5.6. So, you know, like it's not always going to be uh, the depth of field be just where I want it. So I kind of mix it up. I take one a little close. I take one a little bit far. And I see what works best. Okay, we've done that shot. I'm going to slowly start moving over here a little bit. I'll still maybe going to shoot this, but I'm going to just change my composition a little bit. I'm going to get a little more in the middle here. Middle of, you know, this balcony that I'm on. And do a slight variation on that. Okay. And then I'm going to turn my attention to the view on the left here. Because this to me is really the, the kind of meat of this view here. I'm also going to use the spirit level in my viewfinder here. Now I'm going to apologize in advance right away for the noise. There's this annoying squeaking which I bet is coming out pretty strong on the mic. Sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. There's some machine down there that's making this sound. It's just gonna... It's just gonna be with us for this part of the video. Apologies. Very cool. And I mean, I feel like I already nailed it at 24, but I'm gonna zoom in a bit and do it around like 35-ish. Yep, 35, pretty much on the money. Okay. And in this case, I'm focusing in the center there at that brightly lit area off in the distance. It's kind of the center of my shot. I'll do a, a vertical one as well. Portrait orientation. So let's see, I'm gonna get one more shot from here of, an, of a cool detail. Okay. But this is, I think, where eventually I'm gonna shoot this on telephoto. So we'll switch lenses and get to that. We'll probably come back to this part of the report. For now, I'm going to go back to the other side, switch to the wide-angle lens. Okay, so we came back over to the front by the stairs because from here, we can shoot straight down onto these roofs over here. What I like about this roof is that the, roof, the buildings next door are all quite low, so you can really shoot down from above, almost like a drone shot. And for this shot, I'm using the 14-24, to and I'm going to go extremely wide. I like shooting straight down and wide because it gives this intense feeling of vertigo. Hence, we called the workshop the Tokyo Vertigo. All credit due to Axel for that. He came up with that really slick name for that for that experience. Okay, so I'm gonna shoot down here. Okay. And wow, that looks so cool right away. Like I love these views because they instantly look amazing. Now that was on a uh, 2000 ISO, so it's a little bit high. So I'm gonna get down to a fifth f2.8. Again, of course I could do these on a tripod. But I wouldn't be able to do them so quickly and smoothly on a tripod, so therefore I often like to do this kind of stuff without one and just utilize the IBIS and the you know, capabilities of the camera. Another thing I've done in the past, and I'm going to do it right now, is using the railing. So when I had my D4 and I didn't really have IBIS, I would do something like this. I would kind of perch the camera on the railing. In this case, I can also use the screen here to help me out. In fact, I might do it over here because this railing has a little bit better shape, a little bigger. And then I could just use it like a makeshift tripod. Now, this obviously limits the, um, you know, the compositions because the railing kind of forces me to put it into certain positions. But I can really slow down the shutter now, so I'm going to do one second. Okay, and I'm going to turn on the timer. Uh, where is the timer? Ah, is it this button? I can't see the buttons. There we go. And I'm going to put the timer on. I'm going to put it on two seconds. And I'm going to focus over there somewhere. Okay, and then the camera will kind of sit. Of course, I have my strap on, right? I would never let it sit like this by itself. Also, I can use the tap to shoot. Right? Touch shutter AF. That way, when I touch it, it barely moves. Yeah, so by tapping on the back, it's pretty steady. Now, I don't know if my technique works. I don't feel like it's that sturdy, but yeah, these are plenty sharp. All of them are actually tack sharp, so my little technique worked. Let's try it over here as well. I'm going to do like a straight down one. Again, kind of, you know, perching it on the thing, and then tapping to shoot.
Okay, so we're gonna come out here to this corner. I'm gonna shoot straight down from here because it's an epic view. This time again, I'm gonna hold it the whole time. I'm not gonna do any fancy railing stuff. And wow, that's impressive. Beautiful. Very good. I'm gonna actually go to F4 and a whole second. We'll see how that goes. All right, let's see here. Wow, that's great. So yeah, one second handheld. And yeah, like, I got two out of three. First one was sharp, second one was blurry, third one was sharp. So yeah, it just takes, takes a few tries. I'm gonna mix up the compositions a little bit. I'm gonna do a vertical one. Let's see if I can do one just kind of out in this direction. And this is okay. Here I think we can slow or speed up the shutter to two seconds and go to f2.8. Ah. Yeah, f2.8. Beautiful. That was a more kind of standard fair sort of shot in terms of composition. It's pretty cool. Again, one of them was a little out of focus, but the other one was perfect or motion blurred, not out of focus, I should say. All right, a couple more. And another one that's like straight down. And another one this way, just for good measure. Beautiful. So I feel pretty satisfied. Yeah, very satisfied. These are awesome. So now, I'm gonna do one more shot with the 14, and then we're gonna switch lenses. So I'm gonna get out of this little corner here. All right, so I'm gonna shoot this right here. Just a quick one of these pipes and whatnot here on this roof with the background over there. And let me see here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit with my, with, this, with the uh, viewfinder, I mean, so I can focus. And there we go. And this is an easy, simple shot. Nothing fancy, but I just love how all these elements on this roof come together. I might even move forward just a little bit to not have this railing here in the shot. Okay. Awesome. Check that. Does it look good? Very cool. All right. So that was great. Now we're going to do it one more or one more bit of shooting with the 7200. Same stuff, but with kind of a different composition. All right, so I've switched to the 70 to 200, and now we're gonna do some details. And I'm gonna start on this side since we're already here. We'll go back to the other side in a minute. But you know, first things first, I love the silhouette of the like roofs and that wall down there. So I'm gonna get some close-ups of this. Okay, and I'm still on a, on a, let's say, a fifth here. Actually, I don't even need a fifth. It's kind of bright over there. I can do a tenth. There we go. Awesome. Now, of course, that telephoto uh, photo lengths or focal lengths, this slow shutter IBIS shooting gets trickier. But, you know, the camera's handling it. So let's try around 85 mil or so. Love this amazing silhouette over there. Actually, it's interesting that building over there has these pink, or not pink, but red triangles on all of the windows over there. And it's funny because Axel and I were talking about this earlier today that we should make videos about these little like details about Japan. Let us know if you'd like to hear more about these kinds of things because we might make some content like just about these little peculiarities of Japan. But yeah, those Let little, them guess. sorry? Let them guess. Let them guess what? What it what means? It is. Ah, okay. Sorry guys, I was about to tell you what they are. But you're gonna have to guess, because <laughs> Axel, that's a good idea. In guess in the comments. But I'll take a, a close-up photo of it so you can really see what I'm talking about, because it wasn't. I think it's impossible to see on the video, and it's um, it wasn't so clear in my initial photo. So here we go. So you can see in this image that on those doors on that building there are these red triangles, right? And here they're on these doors, but I'll give you a little hint. On other buildings. 
You'll see them even on the windows, on the glass transparent windows, you'll sometimes see these red triangles. Give me a guess in the comments what you guys think those are. Let's talk about it. I'm curious what everyone thinks. All right, or if you know the answer, I mean, just go ahead and spoil it, I suppose. <laughs> now, another thing that I like on rooftops like this is shooting from above, and it looks almost like a, like old school RPG video games, you know, like like a Final Fantasy or something or whatever. Anyone you can think of, where it's like an isometric view, like that top-down kind of 45 degree angle view. That's what I'm getting right here. I love this this view. You see here. Like you know, Diablo. like Diablo, yeah, that's a better example. I think I was thinking of Diablo. I don't even really play Final Fantasy, but I played a lot of Diablo when I was growing up. And yeah, this is kind of the Diablo view. It's called the isometric perspective. That's actually the technical term. And here, it's like, it's like the perfect isometric perspective. And the long lens nails that. Like you can see so many little details on that roof down there. Um, let me get one of that open door roof that I mentioned earlier. Nice. And so you can see that, you know, your natural instinct when you hit a location like this is to do wide. Everything's gotta be wide because you want to get the beautiful cityscape. But the details are amazing too. Let me shoot one down there as well near the silhouette area that's slightly different. Okay, I'm gonna just scooch over here a little bit. I'm not gonna go all the way over there, but just to this little part here and shoot more of this isometric view. Mm. Oh, there's a guy down there. A couple of guys, that's cool. And then maybe also this direction. With the skyscrapers in the background to kind of show the layering of the city. Well, that was totally handheld with no bracing and a half second. And I mean, at least one or, one or two of them look tack sharp, impressive, extremely impressive. So back over here, and I'm going to shoot that initial classic view one more time, but this time I'm going to go deep, zoom deep in there, because I love the view in the distance. Oh, that's gorgeous. Those like ducts and the light filtering out. And I might even show an old photo of mine of this view because Today the air is clear, but in that old photo, if my memory serves, it was actually kind of smoky, which added a beautiful bit of ambiance. When I was buying this lens, I buy everything secondhand, and there was a, they had a couple of them at the store, and one of them was missing the foot, and it was like 60 bucks cheaper. And the guy was like, "Yeah, just get that one." You know, he was kind of trying to get me to buy. He's like, "Yeah, you get this one cheaper." I was like, "Bro, I need the foot." This foot is crucial. I mean, for tripod, of course, and also like this. And I think you can't actually replace this from Nikon. We, he and I both checked. Like, he's like, well, I'll look it up how much it costs separately. And it, it was either impossible to buy or like stupidly expensive. So I was like, dude, just give me the one with the foot. I want to have the foot. What else do I like here? I'm going to scooch over a little bit. I love this like structure on the roof of one of the buildings back there. It's this weird, like, sci-fi looking structure. And this we're going to shoot on 2.8 because it's quite dark now. ISO has gone up. So I should mention, like, what's going through my mind when I'm shooting this in terms of exposure. I mean, you can probably already tell, but when I frame up the scene, I'm using auto ISO, right? So I always glance at my ISO. And then I decide, okay, it's on 800 and I have, you know, f5.6, well, I can drop it to 2.8 and I'll get the ISO from 800 down to 200, that kind of thing. So I'm using auto ISO, but I'm constantly watching it. So it's like, not quite, it's not manual ISO, but it's like manual ISO by proxy. I'm very much watching the ISO constantly when I'm shooting on M, which meaning I'm manual shutter, manual aperture, but still auto ISO. Of course, sometimes I do shoot full manual with everything, but when I'm moving around like this, I find it easier to just keep an eye on the auto ISO and um, not worry about it as much as I'd have to if it was manual. But often on a tripod, I do full manual. That's when uh, I shoot fully manual. Okay, I know I'm kind of doing this view to death, but I kind of keep, I don't know, seeing it a little differently. 
or let's look around through the lens to see if I can find anything else interesting back there. I think I see something that will be good. Close to the original ducts, but a different set of ducts. And this time with skyscrapers behind them. You know, the first time I ever used a, a telephoto lens with VR, it was a, I believe, 80 to 400, the Nikon F mount one. And I, you know, I put on 400 and the VR doesn't engage till you focus. So I'm looking through it, it's all kind of shaky because it's 400 and I started focusing and the image is like, Zhoop! like steady down. And I was blown away. I was like, wow, that's so stable. It really shocked me how stable you can get it. So this one as well is very, very stable. Yeah, so for, so yeah, I'm having fun kind of getting, pushing the camera to the limit. So on 200 millimeter and a half second by hand was no good. The camera just couldn't, couldn't keep it steady, which fair enough. I mean, that's pretty slow shutter for such a long focal length um, to try to keep it sharp, especially since the, lo the physically longer the lens, I believe the more the vibration matters because as, as my hands shake a little bit, the tip of the lens moves quite a lot because of the length. So it creates a bigger arc, a shorter lens, like a, 40 mm, like a little pancake 40 millimeter, be easier to hand hold even at a slow shutter. But of course, they don't make 200 mils that are like that tiny. Okay, I feel like we've, we've done everything we could with the 200. Let me just go back to the other side of the roof and then we'll, do, we'll close out the video over there. All right guys, so we're basically almost done, but I, I realized I missed one shot that I wanted to do with the 24 to 70 that I really like. This view here, all these textures on this building, the way it creates these amazing shadows. So here I'm gonna kind of lean off the edge a little bit, zoom in a little bit. I'm probably around 50 mil, 35 mil, okay. And there we go, on an eighth of a second. Nice, Let's see how that looks. Beautiful, on an eighth of a second is no problem. Like the camera just nails it. And let's do it vertically as well to show the uh, all these nice vertical lines in the scene. Okay. An eighth is already pretty easy for the camera, but just to be safe, I'm still firing off like three in a row. Okay, and I'm gonna do a bit of a wider one around 24 to get a bit more of the building on the on the right, like the that wall over there that's kind of receding into the distance. Okay, around 28 mil. Yep, 28. Beautiful. And I know Axel's like, hey man, wrap it up. It's been, we've been here, it's getting cold. There's one more cool thing. I just noticed that now there's this utility pole down there and there's this amazing shadow being cast on the wall. So we're gonna do this on about 70 millimeter. And yeah, that's, that's an awesome shot. And what's cool about this for me is I never shot this before. Like I've come up on this roof many times, but I never noticed how cool this utility pole looks. And there's like this flickering fluorescent light that's sort of lighting it. Looks very dramatic. Okay, I overshot the crap out of it because I wanted to make sure it's sharp, but man, that shadow looks really cool. That's a pretty cool shot. That's a my, that's my jam, as I like to say. And I bet you, you know, I can imagine that some people when they see these photos, it's like, why is he interested in this? This is not that cool. But actually to me, these weird little esoteric elements are what really defines me personally as a photographer, right? And I like sharing those with you more than the more obvious cool shots of, you know, the beautiful city, which is beautiful, right? But this more special kind of weird stuff, the natto photos, as I called them in a video a while back. Um, I'm not gonna go into that in this one. But yeah, these are the things that I find are most interesting and the ones that I hope inspire you to go out and get your own kind of unique, unusual perspective style photos. The ones that people are not as likely to shoot, okay? Defining your own unique vision. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the little exploration of this rooftop with different lenses, with different focal lengths, leveraging the focal lengths to take advantage of the perspectives in different ways. We do have a video about perspective and focal length and how those two things play into each other. So maybe check that out. If I remember to put the card, there'll be a link. Otherwise, just check our channel. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope you found that interesting. Please consider supporting us on Patreon. Please consider checking the referral links for any of the gear that I used in this video. It's all there. And of course, as always, challenge your eye.